for you? <laughs> Having a good day? Yeah. Yeah. Are you still happy about Bristol, or are you upset that you've had to defend her? <laughs> I'm like not defending. Of... Yeah. Though. So, um, no, I'm obviously, yeah, happy how Bristol turned out for us. So, yeah, excited to be here at Kansas, another great track, and, um, yeah, hoping we can just put together another solid weekend. Have you enjoyed some of that debate or the discussion, and do you feel like it hopefully could create some changes, if any changes? Um, no, I mean, I... To me, it wasn't really a debate either. I think there's just, uh, I think trying to give a perspective from the, you know, a driver's point of view who's been around now for over 10 years and, and seen different packages and, and different, you know, results on the racetrack. You know, not every race is going to be super exciting. So, um, yeah, I think that was more where I was coming from. Um, it's just, you know, stop being so negative. All right, so do you... How many times did you watch the finish from last year, or from last spring? When it's uh, at this just, just whenever you know. It's obviously used for highlight reels, so you, you see it quite a bit. But um, yeah, no, it was cool to be on the the good the good end of that. Going into this, um, at least going into the season, we kind of thought the round of 16 was going to be the wild card around with the three tracks in it. But now we have Talladega and we have the reconfigured Roval. Do you kind of do you foresee that this round could be just as big of a wild card as the last three races? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Typically, this round with Talladega and the Roval, I would say, is is been has been the wild card um, round. I think now we've had we have two wild card rounds. Just the first one, you know, the the points are a little bit more kind of spread out, all right. But um, now as it gets a little bit narrower, um, it becomes you know, a little bit more stressful. But um, yeah, I think that's why for us being in our position, if we can have a good Kansas and. Um, you know, extend our gap to the to the cutoff. You know, hopefully, it'll make the less the rest around less uh, stressful. And this is also your first uh, race on a 1.5 mile track since Kansas in May, after missing the 600. So, I mean, granted, you know, th there's so many unique tracks on the schedule now. Does it kind of feel you know odd just having that much of a break on the type of track that was you know on the schedule for so long? Uh, no, because I mean, I didn't I didn't even know <laughs> that I that I hadn't been on a mile and a half in that long. You know, because in my opinion, like Michigan feels that way, um, Darlington feels that way. So, yeah, they're they're both intermediate style tracks to me. So the size doesn't really matter. And then uh, yesterday during the Arca race, score day was um, I finished top five. Was making a lot of aggressive moves. Um, do you what? You know, coming from a similar background and someone who's sung his phrases, do you kind of see similarities between him and you kind of when you were first starting getting out in NASCAR and wanting to just, you know, push the limit? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think you can look at my first few truck starts and, and really like Homestead, I think, you know, like I wrecked the field, <laughs> you know, pulling a similar move. So I think, though, when you're young and, and don't come from a stock car background, um, you know, you got to learn a lot, and, and I think you know, that, was just, that was really his first time being in different aero situations, so I'm sure he took a lot away from the, the day yesterday, and, and will be uh, you have a better understanding of kind of how to position your car and how to, you know, take runs or not take every run, uh, stuff like that. So he's obviously got an extreme amount of talent, and, and, you know, I think he's got a lot of hype, but at the same time, you know, He's so new to stock cars that like he is he is really learning and having to learn quickly so um i'm excited to kind of see how he progresses and as he understands the car more i think you'll you'll see less mistakes probably less like over aggression and uh you know look at me like i'm 12 or so years <laughs> into stock car racing and i still make those uh moves and and sometimes they work out some a lot of times they don't but um yeah it's fun to, to watch as a fan and it's fun to kind of see somebody try and learn and for you what was that process of learning when you were that age and you were you know first getting full-time in soccer as well yeah I don't quite remember exactly but um like I had mentioned you know I, I just think of Homestead um yeah I ran up front a lot and, and I made you know a similar kind of style move like you dive to the bottom and think those those moves are going to work and then you don't or they don't you, know, you lose the air on your truck or whatever and, or car and uh, wash up into the field and, and cause crash so um yeah like i said you know he's he's never been in a situation like what you get yourself in at kansas a lot so um yeah i think yeah there was moves that worked yesterday there was moves that didn't and i, I think he'll learn from all of those thank you what's his what's his biggest attribute that makes him so good um 
I don't know. I think he's got a good feel for grip and um, the tire and, and, you know, can, can live kind of on a limit uh, a lot like me. So, um, yeah, I think he's just, uh, whether that be in a sprint car or just in the short amount of starts he's had in a stock car. So um, he's young and, and uh, he learns quickly. So, you know, he'll be, he'll be good. Steven Stump of FrontChurch.com here. Come back for more great racing videos. And if you like us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.